So here's another Brother Grimm story for Dean. This is the story of Rumpelstiltskin. There once was a miller who was poor, but he had a beautiful daughter. It so happened that he crossed paths with the king and trying to impress him, the miller claimed, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. The king said to the miller, such an art would, would please me well. If your daughter is gifted as as gifted as you claim, bring her to the castle tomorrow and I will put her to the test. When the girl was brought before the king, he led her to a chamber filled with straw and gave her a spinning wheel and a bobbin and said, now set to work. But if you have not spun the straw into gold by dawn, then you will die. He made sure that the room was locked and left the poor girl alone inside. She sat there fearing for her life, having no idea what to do. She knew nothing about how to spin straw into gold and her worry grew with each passing moment until finally she broke down into tears. <sighs> Suddenly the door opened though and a little man stepped in saying, good evening, Miss Miller. Why are you crying so? Oh dear me, I've been told to spin all this straw into gold and I have no idea how. The little man said, what will you give me if I spin it for you? My necklace, she answered. So the little man took the necklace and sat down on the wheel and with three spins, the spool was full. He loaded another spool and whir, whir, whir. And with three more spins, the second spool was just as full. And so it went on till morning when all the straw had been spun and all the spools were laden with gold. At sunrise, the king appeared and we, when he saw the mass of gold, he was altogether astounded and mighty pleased. But his heart soon grew greedy for more. So he had the girl brought to another chamber with full of straw, even bigger than the last one, and ordered her to spin it all in the upcoming night if she valued her life. Again, she didn't know what to do and began to weep. And again, the door swung open and the little man appeared and said, what will you give me if I spin this straw to gold for you? The ring on my finger, she replied. And the little man took the ring and let the spinning wheel fly again. And by morning, he had spun all the straw into shining gold. The king was thrilled by all the sight of the yellow meadow but his hunger for gold has not been satisfied. And he had the little girl still taken to a still bigger chamber and said, another nice work for you. But this time, if you succeed, you shall be my wife. He thought to himself, even if she's just a miller's daughter, I won't find a richer woman in all the world. She was hardly alone again. When the little man came back a third time and asked, what will you give me now if I spin the straw for you once more? I have nothing left to give, she answered. Then promise me that when you become queen, you will give me your firstborn child. Who knows how this will all end, thought the girl. In her distress, she could think of no other way out, and she gave in to the little man's demand. And once more, he began to spin the straw into gold. The next morning, the king came and found what he had hoped for, and as promised, he married her. And so the beautiful miller's daughter became a queen. A year later, she brought a precious baby into the world and thought nothing more of the little man. But suddenly, he strode into her chambers and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was terrified and offered the little man all the riches of the kingdom, if only he would leave the newborn child alone. But he, insist, but he insisted, nope, a living being is worth far more to me than all the treasures in the world. And the queen began to grieve and cry so terribly that the little man finally felt a little sympathy for you. I will give you three days time, he said. And if you know my name by then, you may keep your child. All night long, the queen struggled to think of every last name she'd ever heard and sent a messenger out into the kingdom scouring far and wide for any other names. When the little man returned the next day, she began with such names as Casper and Melancor and Balthazar and tried all the other names she knew, one after another. But at, e 
After each one, the little man said, no, that is not my name. On the second day, she had all the families surrounding the castle question, and she offered this little man their rarest and sure, strangest of nicknames. Could he be called Ribs Fiend? Or Mutton Chops? Or Lace Legs? Each time he answered, no, that's not my name either. On the third day, the messenger returned and reported, I could not find one single new name. But as I was pressing on through the hinterlands by the high mountains along the forest edge, I passed a little house. And in the front of the house, there was a fire burning. And around the fire was a ridiculous looking little man hopping about on one leg saying, Today I bake and tomorrow I brew. The next day I steal the king's baby, the, steal the queen's baby boo. Oh, it's so good and surely no shame that no soul knows Rumpelstiltskin's my name. Now you can imagine how delighted the queen was hearing that name. Not long after the little man came up and asked, Now my dear queen, what is my name? At first she said, Can it be Tom? Nah. Or Dick? No. What about Harry? No. Oh dear, could it possibly be Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you that. The devil told you that, screamed the little man, and he stomped his right foot so hard that he drove his leg down through the floor all the way to his waist. And then in a fit of rage, he put his left foot in both hands and tore himself right in two. The end. story of a man who in some ways is very nice and in some ways is very mean today i bake and tomorrow i brew and the next day i'll steal the queen's baby boo oh it's so good and surely no shame that no soul knows